Hey folks, it's Speedy Stevie Video Time again. Crew, December 9th, 2020. After 40,000 hours of work, Bentley Mulliner has today completed the first new Bentley blower in 90 years, with the delivery of Car Zero, the prototype car for the blower continuation series. This highly exclusive run of 12 customer cars, all pre-sold, will be crafted from the design drawings and tooling jigs used for the original four blowers built and raced by Sir Henry, Tim, Birkin, in the late 1920s. Specifically, Bentley's own team car, chassis HB3403, engine SM3902, registration U, U, 5872. Team car number 2, has provided the master model for the continuation series, with every single component laser scanned as part of the wheels up, sympathetic restoration. From this data, 1846 individual parts have been designed and handcrafted to create the new blower. 230 of those parts are actually assemblies, one of which being the engine, taking the total part count to several thousand when fixings and interior trim parts are included. Each of these parts and assemblies have been created by a project team of Bentley Mulliner engineers, craftspeople and technicians working together with a number of British specialists and suppliers. Blower Car Zero is a dedicated test and development prototype, built in advance of the 12 customer cars, and will be subjected to months of durability and performance testing. Finished in gloss black, with an interior in oxblood red leather from Bridge of Weir, Car Zero made its debut today to officially mark the creation of the new Bentley Motors campus and crew. Made possible by the closing of Pims Lane, Bentley's address since 1946, the campus extends Bentley's headquarters to a new expanded footprint. Chairman and Chief Executive of Bentley Motors, Adrian Hallmark, had the honor of driving Car Zero down Pims Lane to mark the occasion, and comments. Today was a truly remarkable day, not just as a milestone in the blower continuation series project but also for Bentley Motors. To drive the first new blower in 90 years was a privilege, and the quality of the car would make Sir Tim Birkin himself proud. The craftsmanship is exquisite, and I'm pleased to report that the car drives just as beautifully as our original team car. It was also significant that I could drive the new blower down Pims Lane, now part of our main site, as we expand to create the new Bentley campus. Investing in our headquarters is vital both for Bentley's future and for crew, and our new developments and buildings are a physical manifestation of the exciting future before us as we start our journey to become the world leader in sustainable luxury mobility. The Blower Continuation Series is the first customer-facing project delivered by the new Bentley Mulliner Classic Portfolio, one of three new divisions of Mulliner alongside Coachbuilt, currently developing the equally exclusive Bacalar, and collections, responsible for the Continental GT Mulliner. The first step in creating Car Zero was an extensive analysis of the original design drawings and drafts that were referenced in the creation of the original Blower Team cars, together with archived period photographs of the cars. Following a piece-by-piece -piece disassembly of the number 2 team car owned by Bentley, likely the most valuable Bentley in the world, and an exceptionally precise laser scanning of the frame and its components, a complete digital CAD model of the blower was created. The Bentley Blower, one of the most iconic cars of the pre-war years. Developed by Sir Tim Birkin in, in a quest for more speed, uh, in conjunction with Amherst Villiers, he attached a supercharger to the front of the car. This gave the car almost 240 brake horsepower, above the 175 brake horsepower for the road car. And at Brooklands, it took the lap record at just over 137 miles an hour. Bentley owns team car number two, the most iconic, the most valuable and the most campaign team car of the four. 
The car took part in many endurance races in 1930, most notably driven by Sir Tim Birkin in the 1930 Le Mans. Famously fast, but sadly unreliable, the car never won a race. Today, the car remains taxed and tested, and driven on a regular basis. Recently, in our centenary year of 2019, the car completed the Melia Melia without missing a beat. As part of the, the rebirth of Malino, um, the oldest coach builders in the world, um, we were looking for something to do with the ingenuity, the creativity and the engineering skills that we had developed um, through the restoration of the, the Corniche. So we realised we had the perfect opportunity. Our a team blower needed a bit of a restoration and so we were able to then utilise the fact that the car had been taken apart to be able to scan and measure and document every single part which is exactly the detail you need to start a recreation project. In late 2019 we dismantled the original team car, uh, scanned all the individual components, collated all the information into one CAD model. From that, we learnt a lot of history about the parts, a lot of history about the car. The chassis itself was twisted uh, from several accidents that it had had uh, in, its, in its racing career. We carefully restored and put the car back together, uh, and in doing so we spent uh, over 300 hours cleaning the car. When we'd learnt everything we could, we immediately started the engineering of Car Zero. Uh, we started the assembly of that car seven months ago uh, in a specially set up Mulliner workshop. We used the CAD model that we created and working with specialists around the country uh, and experts to create nearly 2,000 parts required for the car. We used a supplier called Israel Newton and Sons who uh, produced boilers for uh, engines, uh, steam engines. They used the techniques that we needed to produce the, uh, the chassis authentically. So they're hand-formed, hand-heated and hammered chassis. They're techniques that go back over 100 years and they're also using original tools and, and fixtures for those parts. The same with the radiator. So uh, we used a company called Vintage Radiators. Again, using all hand-forming and techniques that were uh, of the period when this car was originally created. So over the last seven months we spent nearly 40,000 man-hours producing the car that you see today. And we're incredibly proud of the techniques that we've used to produce this car. Recreating designs from the 1920s is an incredibly difficult and complex process. Fortunately here in Malino we have a large group of talented craftsmen working in metal and in wood and in leather that enable us to, to utilize those, those skills and look back at the design from the past to create this, this new car. The new blowers have a brand new ash frame. Those frames have been taken into the workshop here and those expert craftsmen have retrimmed them using the same techniques and the same methods as used in the original development of the car. So the seats have been trimmed with a oxblood red bridge of weir leather and they're also stuffed with about 10 kilograms of horsehair in the same way that the original seats were. We have created a brand new car that has all the essence and the, the engineering and the design of a, of a car that's nearly 100 years old. And to see that come to life and to be, to be recreated is an amazing experience. We're incredibly proud of what we've managed to achieve here. When I look at this car now, and see the detail and the quality of every component that we've created. It's a true testament to both the team at Mulliner and the community of collaborative partners that we've worked with to bring this dream to reality. When we set out on this project for the continuation car, we never imagined how well it would turn out. The craftsmanship and the engineering of this car is absolutely world class. 
but the most important thing is of course the way it feels on the road. So now it's my great privilege to be the first person to drive it on the Bentley closed roads and I think I'll go and do that right now, if you'll excuse me. I'm pretty sure that both Sir Tim Birkin and Walter Owen Bentley would be proud of what we have achieved in homage to their original achievements. That's it for another Speedy Stevie video. Subscribe now.